Hi, I'm Matt. Hi, I'm Scott. We're doing a series of videos documenting our research into agentic AI and what it means in production. In the previous video, you saw Tom demonstrating our SRE agent. So if you've not seen that, go and take a look and then come back here. Today, Scott and I are going to talk about the inner workings of the agent, how it's deployed, how it's productionized, and how it works under the hood. So let's start with the obvious then. How have we built the agent? So our agent is it's built on top of a protocol called Model Context Protocol. Model Context Protocol is attempting to be the standardized way of building agents, sort of like a USB-C, but for agentic systems. What it's effectively doing is it's a way of allowing a large language model to interact with the environment effectively in a standardized way. There are the three components in an agentic system. So we have our large language model that I think everyone knows. Well, that's used to make these decisions. We have an MCP client, which acts as an intermediary between the large language model and yeah. our servers. And then our servers are a way to interact with the real world. So these could be APIs or databases and things like that. Right. And each server represents a specific tool that the agent has access to, right? Yeah. So, for example, in our agentic system, our SRE agent, we have MCP servers for inter interacting with GitHub, Kubernetes, and Slack. So I think a lot of existing stuff that's written about agentic systems they're often talking about consuming third-party services and running their client locally. And that's fine if you're playing around with something on your own machine, but we want to productionize something. So that meant that we've had to also figure out how to productionize that client. Can you tell us more about how we've done that? Yes, absolutely. So Typically, a lot of people might be using Cursor or Claude right. to, to build their agentic systems. So how they're doing that is they're running servers locally, and then Claude locally on their machine is interacting with them through this yeah. thing that's called a client. As we said earlier, it's effectively an intermediary between the large language model and these servers. Mm -hmm. But we were very really keen to be able to have Slack integration, and so Slack can't actually interact with Claude. There's no way of sending requests between Slack and Claude. Yeah. So what we wanted to do was host all of this system ourselves. One, it gave us a good understanding of how these things can actually be productionized going beyond Claude and Cursor, but also it allowed us to have these external integrations, perhaps having a, a agent sit within a wider application which you can send HTTP requests to. But what we've done to do that is we've used the Python SDK Fast MCP. We've used that to build our yeah. client. This has also allowed us to add in some interesting things, so things like caching, filtering the tools ourselves, potentially guardrails as well in the future, extra things on top of what Claude or Cursor might be able to offer us. Anyone can build their own client using that same Python SDK, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. anyone can. You can have a variety of different LLMs that you might want to interact with. It sort of allows you to just get really deep into it and understand all the different components. What's the biggest thing that you've learned from doing this project? I think perhaps just how costly sometimes yeah. running these things are. So when we initially started out using Claude, we had to quite quickly use a paid-for service. So we couldn't use the free service because we'd just run out of tokens too quickly. And then even using the paid-for service, we'd find out that we'd run out quite quickly. And then when we switched to implementing all of this ourselves, we were using the Anthropic API. And initially, I think we were using about 40 cents of tokens per diagnosis. We actually implemented tool caching, which is actually a really, really interesting thing where the Anthropic API can cache all the tools. So every time it's making a request, you don't have to send in the tools every time. You can cache the previous conversation. And basically this allowed us to reduce our costs down to I think seven cents per diagnosis from 40 cents. It was about an 80% reduction in cost. I think that was really cool to see. I suppose what's really hidden behind the scenes with these systems is just how much back and forth communication there is eating up tokens, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just the, the constant back and forth between the LLM to the, to the client, the client to the tools and back and forth mm. that can really eat away the tokens. All of the source code is available on GitHub. So if you want to have a look at how we've done it and contribute yourself, then you can see the link below. And we have three more topics coming. So we're going to be diving deep into three research topics. One is cost effectiveness, how to get more out of the token budget that you might have. The second is how effective these agentic systems are overall at the task we're asking it to perform. And the third, really interesting, is security. There's so much to say there when it comes to potential vulnerabilities and attack surfaces. So stay tuned for those videos coming soon. For now, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.